Good evening, world. My name is Bruce Hecht. This is more Live from Home by Candlelight. This is a timely and relevant Bruce Coburn song for Snarkoleptic Randy. Sunset is an angel weeping Holding out a bloody sword No matter how I squint I cannot Make out what it's pointing toward Sometimes you feel like you've lived too long on days drip slowly on the page sets me to pacing the cage when I first saw a baby boy I didn't know he was going to turn out to be my first heart transplant patient. His mother came to see me when she was 17 years old, stoned out of her mind. And that was a good five months before baby boy was even born. She was an unemployed high school dropout living with her similarly situated derelict boyfriend. She was estranged from her divorced parents, and both she and the baby daddy were living on public aid. Motes of dust on the wind, human flotsam floating aimlessly on a turbulent sea with no anchor, pockets full of sand. The obstetrician's office had arranged their visit following a routine screening ultrasound exam because there seemed to be something wrong with the fetal heart. It was reassuring that she showed up for the scheduled appointment at all, and she did seem curious to know what the heart problem was. There was little outward emotional reaction to the bad news. Your baby has a heart malformation incompatible with life outside the mother. I explained the surgical problem, and she seemed to take it all in, nodding appropriately. There are two options for fixing the problem, I told her. There's an established but difficult staged surgical approach requiring at least three separate operations over the first five years of life. And if everything goes well, we cross our fingers and hope for a good result, which could mean no more surgery in the future. Or we could replace the baby's heart Newborn heart transplant was still quite new at that point. A new heart sounds like a second chance. It sounds like starting over. And that's how she took it. She just needed a reason to turn herself around. She needed something to care about. Something to be responsible for. The baby was born on New Year's Eve, and we put a new heart into her new baby at the beginning of that new year. She took the occasion to start a new life with her renewed family and a new attitude. She attended every follow-up visit. She followed every direction. She gave the prescribed medications. She reconnected with her own mother and married baby boy's father, who got himself a full-time job. She breastfed little baby boy learned about maternal nutrition from the Lalesh League, and she worried about broccoli and soy sauce. She confidently handled the predictable side effects from the anti-rejection medications and wisely accepted her mother's offer to help out. She celebrated the baby's one-year survival with a Life Day birthday party, where she announced she was pregnant again. Of course they were scared, but number two turned out to be fine, and though father was often away on the road working as a long-haul trucker, 
the day to take care of baby boy had become routine for them. She and grandmother were handling the typical chaotic turmoil of simultaneously breastfeeding number two and chasing after the transplanted toddler without too much stress. She was a great mom, and she loved her new life. And then baby boy got sick. Just a little runny nose and a mild fever, but that is exactly what we'd been asking her about at every follow-up visit for two years. The immune system suppressing medications limit your ability to develop a fever. So any signs of organ rejection or even severe infection will be subtle. On the other hand, all kids get sick eventually. and It really is amazing how long they'd gone without getting exposed to something. Testimonial, really, to the extent and effectiveness of mother having restricted shopping mall excursions, grocery store visits, and even visitors to their home before this crazy era of social distancing. She'd turned down daycare and play groups, leaving few outside activities, which would have made her day-to-day -day life easier. So even though this was just a little runny nose and a mild fever, their local family doctor panicked, appropriately. A helicopter transferred baby boy back to us at the children's hospital 90 miles away on Christmas Eve morning, and though the mother planned to follow in her car, the hospital infection control regulations prevented her bringing number two. Number two had to stay home, an unanticipated breastfeeding dilemma, painful engorgement, abrupt weaning, formula intolerance. Though both parents had been looking forward to their Christmas together with the kids, the decision was made. She had to wait anxiously at home for the father's planned Santa Claus grand entrance and spent that time responsibly preparing baby care supplies to help father and grandmother take care of number two while she was away. She was pumping breast milk frantically to save in the fridge. There was no telling how long she was going to be gone. The father arrived home late, held up by a typical Midwestern Christmas Eve snowstorm, and mother left him at the door holding a sack of gifts he'd had in one arm and the crying infant in the other, hurriedly headed off for the hospital. The snowstorm became a blizzard and the icy highway became a parking lot of stranded travelers and emergency vehicles. She never made it to the children's hospital. A policeman told father there was a pileup and her car was crushed between two trucks. He was shown a picture of the car and the scene and took the news without much emotion. Baby boy turned out to be fine. No organ rejection, just sniffles and a mild fever. Went home a few days later in time to attend his mother's funeral with father, grandmother, number two, and dozens of sobbing hospital staff. And then life resumed. Baby boy would grow up with no memory of his mother. But we remember her. We remember. A man is placed upon the steps and a baby cries. bells will start to ring And as the heaviness oh, the heaviness the body settles in somewhere you can hear a mother sing Then 
And it's one foot and then the other As you step out on the road Step out on the road How much weight? How much? Then it's how long and how far and how many times Good night.